I tended to an Illidian earlier. Major Sarlet Arminta. Ah, yes. I met him at the negotiations. I never would have imagined I'd be here, on the same ship, working together with our oppressors. But now that I am, I can imagine a future where the Hotari and Illidians are no longer enemies. I always hoped for peace, but it seems so far away. There's still a lot of bad blood. Peace is often fleeting. If there's a chance, you should take it. Peace with our former enemies may be hard for some to accept, but it's what my people need. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Thank you, Tylus. I'll take it from here. We're almost done. I have to brief Ambassador Spock in a few minutes. Ambassador Spock can wait. You have some fences to mend. Personally, I'm against the needless destruction of innocent life forms. So I'm glad you transported the Taconian crystals onto the ship. But Lieutenant Bedrosian obviously feels otherwise. And right now, you need the full support of your bridge crew. Being an effective leader requires trust. But an issue as divisive as this can create discord. We all know I'm new to this, so it's nice to have your support. Even when we don't agree or there's something I don't like, I'll let you know. But you'll always have my support. It's been a chaotic last few days for everyone. You need to name a new first officer in preparation for what's coming. You'll have to work to regain Lieutenant Bedrosian's trust, but if she's removed from consideration, it comes down to Westbrook or Ermot. Obviously, there are pros and cons with each, but ultimately, the decision is yours. Commander Westbrook has seniority and was hoping to be Captain Solano's first officer. Ermot has the knowledge and experience that makes him more than qualified. You really couldn't go wrong with either of them. At the moment, I am leaning toward selecting Commander Westbrook as the new first officer. That would be an excellent choice, considering your history. The crew would respect the fact you chose someone likely to challenge your opinions and present a different point of view. You're as good as new. Thank you, Dr. Duvall. Always nice to have a captive audience. You really shouldn't keep Ambassador Spock waiting. Captain. I'll meet you inside. I'm here to officially tender my resignation from the crew of the USS Resolute. I cannot in good conscience continue to serve aboard this ship, not while the interests of the enemy take precedent over the safety of the crew. Lieutenant, we both know how much we need your help and expertise for the coming conflict. I have no one to replace you. I understand, Captain, and I apologize, but my heart is not in it any longer, and to stay would be a disservice to us both. My door is always open if you change your mind. I appreciate that. We'll have Ambassador Spock via subspace shortly. Thank you, Mr. Armand. I'll notify Lieutenant Bedrosian we're about to begin. That won't be necessary. Petty officers Diaz and Edsalar have first-hand experience with our adversaries. I thought it advantageous for them to join this briefing. I understand this is unusual. But I trust you have no objections? Talk about moving up in the world. Not that I'm surprised in the least. I'll allow it, Mr. Chobak. In all seriousness, what Diaz and Edsalar accomplished aboard the Zeldi is nothing short of remarkable. They're both to be commended, not only for surviving against incredible odds, but for helping our efforts against these Scions. You know, Carter deserves most of the credit. None of us would have made it without his help. We'd all be bioformed by this point. Well, I could say the same thing about Edsalar here. She deserves as much of the credit as I do. It's like a mutual admiration society. Ambassador Spock is ready for you. Put him through. Captain Rindek, 
Your recent change in station certainly warrants mention, and I trust you to faithfully execute your expanded duties. Right now, we must keep our attention on the clear and present danger that lies ahead, the Takan and their warship. The closest populations are the Hotari and Elidian systems, and they are likely the first targets for mass bioforming. After that lies Federation space. I have advised Starfleet Command to send an impromptu battle group to intercept and assist you, but that will take time. You are our first line of defense. And with our shield algorithms compromised, we are at a great disadvantage. Of course, you know that as well as I do. I'm glad to hear the battle group is en route, Ambassador. With what we're up against, we're gonna need all the help we can get. And you will have it. Remember, our strength is drawn from our ability to work together towards a common goal. Have we made any progress in finding a way to defend ourselves from the Aphelion's bioforming weapon? Currently, our shields will not protect us, but I am compiling all of the information the away team gathered on the Zeldi and cross-referencing it against our own, as well as Portal 6-3's methods. The away team is sitting right here. They survived without getting bioformed, so we know it's possible. So, what's the secret? How do we defend ourselves? Is there a weakness we can exploit? Something we can do to avoid getting bioformed. Well, there are no secrets. It's a serious threat. And we're vulnerable. The whole ship is. We saw someone getting bioformed. Once it starts, there's nothing you can do. Huh. <sighs> Can't stop it, but you might be able to slow it down. It's too soon to say for sure, but... We've had some promising indications that Deridium can delay the bioforming process. Deridium? It's not a cure. It's not going to bring anyone back we've already lost. But Deridium is a cell stabilizer, so it has the potential to slow down the onset of physical and mental changes, if not entirely prevent them. And it might be the only ship in the fleet with this much Deridium on hand. In fact, a lot of ships wouldn't have any. I'll forego the rest of my treatments, if it means the crew will be safe. Captain, you'd die. That's an honorable intention, but it's not that simple. It requires a much larger dose to be effective. We don't have enough Deridium on board to protect the whole crew. We barely have enough to protect everyone in this room. Sounds like it won't do us much good, then. The use case I'd suggest is that it could buy a little time for an officer or a small group to complete a task or mission. But it has to be taken at the moment of exposure to the bioforming mechanism. Prepare a delivery method for this... remedy. That raises the question. What is the mission? Assuming the Aphelion uses shields of some kind, I don't expect it will be easy to bypass their defenses. We may not be able to block the Aphelion's attack either. But if they do strike... We know their weapon uses transporter technology. We might be able to backtrack their signal path. Like we did to evacuate Captain Rydek from Tau. Exactly. We could send an away team onto the Aphelion. So we could destroy it from the inside. I'm not exactly sure how, but that's the idea. I think Portal could still help us. If he can't get a first-hand look at the Aphelion, he might be able to identify a weakness. After sparing the remnants of his civilization, I should hope he'd help us. He will. We'll need to prepare a boarding party, if it comes to that. Petty officers Edsilar and Diaz are the logical choices to lead any away mission to the Aphelion. They have already crippled one enemy ship. If anyone can do so again, it is them. This isn't like the engineering mission that took you to the Zeldi. Do you really have some special insights that a tactical team wouldn't? Doesn't the fact that we're here speak for itself? Just surviving won't be enough this time. You're forgetting it's too dangerous to destroy the Cartabula, right? That is still our understanding. It could cause a rift in space itself. So, we can't just beam over to the Aphelion and set off an explosive. 
We need to find a way to shut it down from the inside. Precisely my thinking. If this is the necessary course of action, I support it. With the help of Portal, he should be part of the away team. I will compile all the latest data on the tricorders, just in case. In the meantime, I want you working on ways we can combat the Tacon tech. Shields, weapons, anything we can use. Yes, Captain. Anything else, Ambassador? I know this matter is in capable hands. Hold the line as best you can. Help is on the way. Thank you. I have faith in all of you to meet this moment with the urgency it requires. I expect all of us to give it everything we've got. Thank you, Petty Officers Diaz and Edsilar. You're dismissed. While we have a quorum of senior staff, there is a procedural element we need to take care of. The Resolute Command Codes must be transferred to Captain Rydek. For control of the ship. Of course. Computer, transfer all command codes to Captain Jara Rydek. Voice authorization Ermot, Echo 4 Lima. Voice authorization Duval, Beta 2, Yankee. Voice authorization Westbrook, Alpha 7 Tango. Awaiting your authorization, Captain. Voice authorization, Rydek. Alpha, 5, X-ray. Captain's codes transferred. The updated command structure is incomplete. Please designate a new first officer. Who is the new first officer? Please designate a new first officer. It is an honor and a pleasure to name Commander Westbrook as my new first officer. Thank you, Captain. You made the right choice. Congratulations, Commander. It's long overdue. I know we've had our differences, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Computer, Commander Westbrook is the new first officer of the USS Resolute. Awaiting voice authorization. Voice authorization Westbrook. Alpha 7 Tango. Authorization is now complete. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Nicely done. I think that went well. Captain, could I have a word with you? Give me a minute. Look, I respect your decision, Captain. Commander Westbrook has seniority, and I can understand why you might have felt pressure to promote him. But what I can't understand is why you would choose someone so clearly unsuited for the position. It's the very reason why Captain Solano chose you over him. Because he knew Westbrook as first officer would be disastrous. The answer is simple, Commander Ermont. I need Westbrook's support, especially now. If I chose you, after everything that's happened and him being passed over before, I'd lose him forever. So please, don't take it personally. It's hard not to when I'm the one who earned it. Maybe I've had it wrong this whole time, but I thought we've had an excellent working relationship almost from the moment you first arrived. Of course, I was insulted when you didn't trust me with the information about Captain Solano being compromised, but I've always supported you, which is certainly more than you can say about Westbrook. He was always against you, especially with regard to Captain Solano. I guess loyalty counts for nothing with you. Listen, I value your opinion more than just about anyone's. I rely on it. And if we're going to beat Galvin, I'll need your help now more than ever. So please, don't be discouraged. I'll be fine. Just give me some time. <laughs> 